Behind me is a solar array that's been working great for about three or four years. But today, we're gonna totally rewire it. Now why, and what am I gonna use it for, and pros and cons, we'll get into all those details in this video. Here we go. Hi, I'm David, welcome to my channel where I like to DIY renewable energy and energy efficiency projects. Behind me are three solar arrays. We have a 5.1 kilowatt array, a 4.4 kilowatt array behind me, and just to my left, your right, is a 3.3 kilowatt solar array. Now I've had two out of these three solar arrays wired up and they've been working well. And the last one that I installed last fall is not yet wired. So we're gonna wire that one brand new and we're gonna change the wiring of these two. But they've been working for me, so why change the wiring in the ones that have been working? Well, the reason is that just recently I picked up some GrowWatt brand inverters. Now I've been testing one of the GrowWatt brand inverters on my workbench in two previous videos. Now that inverter is a 5,000 watt inverter and it can take up to 6,000 watts of PV going into it, but it's a high voltage PV charge controller that's built into this unit. It's an all-in-one. So it makes for very simple wiring, but it needs a higher voltage, up to 450 volts coming in from the PV array. Now this, uh, these two arrays right behind me, they are wired for lower voltage systems. A lot of charge controllers only go up to 150 volts. The Victron charge controller that I've been using actually goes up to 250 volts. So it's been working really nice, there's nothing at all wrong with my Victron charge controller, but I just want to try something new. So I picked up these GrowWatt brand inverters, and I actually bought three of them total after the first one worked so well. So I, I now bought two more uh, so that I can create a 15 kilowatt inverter system. So this array right behind me <laughs> is wired as three strings, four panels per string. I'm going to change that up. I'm gonna make two strings, six panels per string. We call this series connecting the panels. So we're running positive from one panel into the negative of the next panel, and then the next one and next one. Six panels in series. When you series connect your panels, you increase the voltage, but the amperage stays the same. I'm gonna run all the strings in on their very own wire. I'm gonna be using 12 gauge wire for this. Currently I have a conduit underground right here from that array, but I don't have one from that array or that array. I need to combine them and put them in this conduit. When I do that, I have enough space in the conduit for the conduit fill, but the conduit currently comes here and then makes a couple of turns and goes up and around. And this was difficult to get the wires in. So I am going to do the terrible task of pulling up the patio. The pavers came up pretty easy. So now we have a straight shot there. So right, right here you can see ice. The ground is still frozen and I'm only down about six inches. So I'm probably too early in the season to try to dig this up. I don't know if the sand is going to be any easier, uh, yeah, <laughs> but man, darn, I got 12 more inches or so to go. This part here is still frozen, and right about here is where I'm hitting the ice, and the rest of that is digging out okay. I have two different piles, we have the fine sand which was just on top, and then the dirt and rock that was underneath that. So this part is pretty close to being done, but still have to wait for this part here to thaw. I don't know what I can do about that. Wow! Good job. This is a 500 foot spool of wire. It is THHN, it's copper wire, and it's stranded, and it's uh, 12 gauge. 
Now I just tied it on to this bucket here so it's not going to go anywhere and now we'll just unroll this and when I've unrolled it to the other end I set up a bucket at 100 feet away from the other bucket so I can wrap it around and now I'll just walk back to the other one and we'll keep doing this until we use up all 500 feet of this. I want five pieces at 100 feet. Well, the spool is empty. I just finished this roll off. So now we should have five even pieces all at 100 feet. There we go. And now we'll do the same on the other end. So five strands, all pretty much equal at 100 feet. These panels at MP are about 9.3 amps. So I think I could have actually used 14 gauge wire, but I chose to use 12 gauge wire because this is about 90 lineal feet of wire to get into the garage from the solar array. Now that length of wire means that there's gonna be voltage drop by the time it gets to the garage. That voltage drop can waste energy out of a system, and I like the system to be as efficient as possible, so I upped the gauge. Now this also helps because I'm packing in several wires into a conduit, and once you get past a certain number of conductors, and I forget what that is off the top of my head, uh, you have to derate the wire. So all that to say that I'm running 12 gauge wire into the garage using THHN wire inside a conduit. Now all the arrays are going to come together at one point to do this, but I'm labeling the individual wires for each string. So my wife here is helping me. She's putting these little uh, stickers that say uh, the, a letter on them. So it's A or B or C, and we're putting that on each end of a particular wire. So now all the solar arrays come together. They're all using 12 gauge wire. I now have six positive wires and six negative wires. I'm also including my original ground wire, which was a six gauge wire. So I'm still gonna reuse that ground wire, uh, which goes to a ground rod out here at the array and runs through the same conduit. Now for conduit fill, according to the NEC, which is the National Electric Code, you don't count the ground wire as part of the fill because it's not a current carrying conductor. I'm actually not that good with uh, ground and bonding and I probably screw up those terms all the time. So let me know in the comments below what the actual uh, definition is. <laughs> I also bought this really large plastic junction box to put out here at the array. Now that's gonna allow for a little extra bit of wire well, if anybody remembers the back of my solar array, I used to have a midnight solar disconnect box right here with some circuit breakers. I've swapped that out for this piece of plywood and this 12 inch by 12 inch by six inch deep junction box. We've got the uh, conduit now leading up into it. We still have the expansion fitting right there. This is the conduit where I'm gonna pull the wire up and this is part of an expansion fitting like this one. It just allows for some movement up and down with frost. So I'm gonna pull the wires up through here and then the last little section where it goes in, I'm gonna add that onto the wires after. But this will give me lots of room to pull that bundle of wire straight up out of the ground because it's gonna have a, a lot of friction. It's gonna be tough to get. So I'm taking the, so this is the end of the hose for the wet dry vac. I'm going to put that on there and it just goes right over here to the wet dry vacuum. Turn this on. So I have this pull string with a little bit of plastic attached and we're just gonna take that. There we go. Needs a little bit of help because it's kind of stretched all the way over there. Need a string. <laughs> so 
So it's up in the shop vac now. Now I don't want to pull wire through the conduit using just a string because you'll actually cut through the plastic 90 degree corners of the conduit. Even though I'm using shallow sweep 90s, you'll still cut through them. There's just too much friction. So I'm going to switch over to a one inch wide webbing material. Now they actually sell this. The name in the industry that I've heard is mule tape. So I'll leave a link to actual mule tape, but I had some old leftover uh, webbing. It's just a one inch wide webbing. It allows for when you pull that, the friction is spread over a larger area. Uh, that way you don't cut through the plastic conduit. I have a piece of webbing which is tied on periodically to these strands. I have a whole bunch of 14 gauge and down here at the bottom, one six gauge for the ground wire. Now this is gonna be a lot to try to fit through this. <laughs> I don't know, wish us luck. Now that I've tied the wire onto this webbing and I've even taped it with some electrical tape to make sure it doesn't come loose, it's time to pull the wires. So I'm gonna get on one end at the garage and I'm pulling that webbing and my wife is out at the solar array and she's guiding the wires in. Now she can't push the wire in, but she can guide it to make sure it doesn't kink uh, right where the conduit ends at the junction box. Now the lube that I'm using is a foaming lube. So you actually put one end of the, the foaming tube into the conduit, you squeeze it until some, some uh, foamy lube comes out. <laughs> and uh, we, I think I did that twice uh, during the pull. Uh, so every time I pulled like 20 or 30 feet, I stopped and I added a little bit more lube in there. And that stuff really helps a lot. I, I could really feel how hard it was to pull the wires until I could tell that the lube kind of got down and past the first 90 underground and then it became really easy. <laughs> so uh, I definitely recommend picking some of that up. Yep. Lube. <laughs> <laughs> Elena was great. Elena was over at the solar array guiding the wires in and I was here hand over hand pulling on the webbing. And now I've got all the lube all over my hands. <laughs> But we have the wires through, all of them, all 14 of the 12 gauge wires and one six gauge ground wire. They're all up here. Now all I have to do is add a, about a two foot section here of pipe with the LB going in through this hole and we'll be in the wire way where I can finally hook these wires up. <laughs> all the wires are now pulled through this conduit and going into the garage right through there. So now I'm gonna put that cover on. So on the back of the array, I'm wiring in an IMO brand disconnect. Now this disconnect switch can actually go up to a very high PV voltage. Now paying attention to the DC voltage here is very important because when you switch it off, you don't want there to be an electric arc inside that disconnect. It will burn out the contacts. The IMO switch is set up with a cam action and spring loaded. So you turn, 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 and then snap. It unlocks or snap, it locks it shut. Opens or closing the switch. And it does that very quickly because of that spring action. Something to keep in mind about this IMO PV disconnect switch. It is not a fuse and it's not a circuit breaker. So it's not an overcurrent protection device. It is purely a disconnect. So in this case, we're running 12 gauge THHN wire, and this is stranded, and I have it all coming out of this conduit, which is coming out of the ground, into this 12 inch by 12 inch junction box. We're then leaving ourselves some extra slack. I made a U-shaped channel here out of three quarter inch. So I just did two 90 degree elbows together so that the penetrations in the box are underneath. I don't like penetrations on the top going down into the three quarter inch over to this junction box. Now I've got a bunch of these strain relief uh, fittings and these are where the PV wires are gonna enter this box. So I'm gonna have the PV wires enter and get tapped into the bottom. And this thinner wire, which is easier to flex, uh, going up and into all of these. So I'm doing one at a time here. Now I went, uh, these are all labeled thanks to Elena. She did all that labeling. So we have 
positive A, negative A, positive B, and now I need to go through these black ones. That's D there. Oh, so the there's the B right here. So we're gonna come up. And I'll just mark where that's gonna go. We're gonna put that right there. Then we give it a little wiggle. Now I switch over to this by hand, little wiggle. All right, so now we are tight. That's the process, one at a time. Systematically, we're going uh, A through D in this, and that's gonna be uh, four strings of PV. So we're gonna be breaking both the positive and negative using this IMO switch, and that's why I can switch up to like a thousand volts or something. <laughs> so it switches on and off both the positive and negative leg. So it's kind of two switches or two blocks of terminals side by side. So I have um, one array on one block and one array on the other, but I do have PV voltage coming in here. So we're gonna check that. Now, when I ran all these wires in and out of the IMO disconnect switch, I made a mistake. It turns out the IMO switch actually crosses. It, it makes a big X pattern for the way that the conductors go inside the switch. I was thinking that they would just go straight up through the switch. <laughs> so uh, for example, I ran string A here and out the disconnect string A, but it turns out I needed to jump over and go diagonally through the switch. Uh, so at first I couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting voltage in the garage and it turns out that's why. It, it was the IMO switch uh, crosses these things over. So if you, if you pick one up, uh, just check with continuity, but they zigzag across the switch. These are the PV wires. These are very thick insulation. Uh, this insulation on here is about three times as thick as the standard THHN wires. And these are uh, strain reliefs. They have rubber grommets inside, so you can't pull this out. 294 volts on this one. 291. Now the next two only have six panels in series, not seven. So 253 and 252. That's because this array that we're standing behind has 12 panels total, so I split it in half. So we have six panels in series per string. That other array has 14 panels on it. Again, split in half, so seven panels in series per string. That's why we had 290 something volts on some of them and 250 something volts on the other. Here's the IMO disconnect switch all put together. It's currently on and check this out. It's got this cool cam action to it. See that? You have to get past a certain point and then it spring loads. neat. And here's the model that I'm using. So all in all, it was a lot of fun to rewire everything. Uh, I did some tidying up. I used a whole bag of zip ties, just zip tying all these wires in place to the solar panel frame. Stick around for the next one uh, where hopefully we're going to get all the grow watt inverters up on the wall and power them on. All right, thanks everybody so much for watching. If you enjoy the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.